I woke up this morning excited, it's Easter weekend, but guess what, boy? <laughs> we still gotta deal with this fake Captain America. I'm not I'm so upset. What's going on you guys, James here with another real reaction and today we're getting into episode 3 of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. If you missed out on both of my episodes from the last 2 weeks, find them at the top of the screen or in the description below because it's been fun. This show has been nothing but just pulse pounding action. I might have just saw that go across my screen but still it has been so much fun. Fun and I really enjoy what the show's doing. It's not going to provide a lot of mystery, everything is really in your face, but there is something really cool that they're brewing up with Zemo coming back on the scene. And hey, I'll tell you, the surrounding cast here, outside of Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie, have been pretty good. For as much as I don't like John Walker or US Agent if you're a comic book fan, I think Wyatt Russell is playing that character really well. And I know a lot of people have mentioned it, but boy, he can swing that shield. I don't know what it is, but it looks so cool last episode. And dare I say, I got a little hype. And then there's Carl. Carly Morgenthau, who's played by Aaron Kellyman, who has a very mysterious past. She's a part of the Flag Smashers, or so I think. There's this group of freedom fighters that I think are factioning off from the Flag Smashers, and I'm really curious to see where that story goes, and I hope they dive into that a little bit more this episode, because they've been the weakest part, I think, of both episodes 1 and 2, where I think they're a little bit more generic, and this show, I think, is going to start to hit another gear, especially, again, with Zemo coming back. But guys, before we get into my reaction, if it is your first time here at the channel, welcome Welcome to Real James, where I talk about movies like this all the time. We react to really cool things, so you're not going to want to miss out. Go ahead and hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel, and tap on the bell so you'll be the first one in the comments. Smash that like button and let me know down below, guys, what you thought of this week's episode. Did it live up to the hype, or are you a little disappointed with the three episodes we've gotten? Alrighty, guys, well, you know what? No more talking. Let's get right into the episode, and I really hope we see fake Captain America get served up a dose of his own medicine because he was yelling at our boys last week. You know what? I'm not having that. I'm wondering if this episode episode is going to be very centered around the super soldier serum and then Zemo comes into play that'd be awesome but I hope we do see more of Isaiah that'd be awesome too I mean he he's such a great character from what I've heard from so many comic book fans that I really think if they don't bring him back it would be a disservice to the character and probably to the show so I mean let's hope y'all alrighty y'all let's do let's do it let's do it hmm Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Let's get it. I'm excited. When half of us came back, it was time to rejoice and <laughs> What is this a commercial? The Global Repatriation Council knows that for many, it wasn't that easy. Okay, so I feel like I, I've seen ads like this at like four in the morning before. Huh. Ah. So new cap is a part of this GRC, whatever whatever this is. We get right into the action though this morning. All right, let's go. Ooh, he spit in his face. Oh. Do you know who I am? Wait, but Cap would not do this. I ooh. Yes, I do, and I don't care. I feel like if somebody spat in Steve Rogers' face, he wouldn't punch that person. I I don't know. Would he? Takes his time, man. We huh. find him. He's got a little bit of a temper though. So we bet on someone who's got a better hand. Hmm. We bet on someone who's got a better hand. And who would that be? Hmm. Alright. So Bucky's taking the lead on the Zemo conversation. Let's go. I wonder if Zemo's like, Well, I don't trust you either, homie. So I'm not gonna talk. <laughs> I love the lighting on Zemo. You can only see half his body. It's very menacing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what an intro. Wow. Boy, a lot of this is giving me Winter Soldier vibes. Oh my gosh. Someone recreated the Super Soldier Serum. Oh, Zemo's like, I'm interested. <laughs> that boy turned his head so fast. I know where to begin. Gosh, Daniel Brule is so awesome. Oh my god. Alright, prison break with Sam and Bucky. Let's do it. That whole conversation seemed a little weird. I don't know. You're going back to prison. If I may. No! <laughs> I cannot believe that Zemo's going to work with them. Man, that's wild. Alright, it's about to get real crazy. And I was really hoping it would. Because, you know, first two episodes left a little to be desired. But with Zemo now? Alright, 
Let's do it. Like the Avengers. Oh, the shade. <laughs> Zemo chill. Oh, the mask. Let's go. Look at the jacket. Oh my gosh, Zemo. <laughs> Wait, did Sam just mumble? <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Everybody loves Marvin Gaye. I like Marvin Gaye. Steve adores Marvin Gaye. Does this, does this bit of humor seem a little but I misplaced? I don't know why. We want to live in a world full of people like the Red Skull. Oh, we got Red Skull. What a name drop. <laughs> ah, Madripoor. Here we go, baby. Oh boy. Oh. Bucky's gonna have to channel the Winter Soldier? You don't know about that, boy. Oh, man. Well, dang, this is a beautiful shot. Alright, Madripoor, here we go. We have to do something about this. <laughs> this outfit, though. I have a feeling it's about to get a little crazy. Now, see, I don't know if these motorcycles are escorting them or if they're intimidating them. Seeing Daniel Brühl and then, you know, you have Sam and Bucky walking through this town with this trap beat is very interesting. This definitely has a very, you know, kind of like punk feel to it, like a, like a cyberpunk in a way, right? With the colors and the neon, it's kind of nice. I don't know, even though I know that something bad is happening. That was Sharon Carter. Oh, yes, let's go. That had to be her, right? Oh my gosh, please. Oh, this is a little haunting just to see him even act like the Winter Soldier. And I give you him. What? Along with the code words to control them. You cannot just give up Bucky like that. Are you kidding me? The Super Soldier Serum is here in Oh, okay. So it's in Madripoor. All right. Oh man. <laughs> Don't pick that up. Oh no. On speaker. On speaker? Oh no. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. <laughs> Sam, I'm sorry. Let, let me call you back. Sam. Sam. Oh, no. Sam. Cover is blown. Oh, things about to go from 0 to 100 real quick. <laughs> oh, so that's Sharon Carter that was helping them, right? Yeah, but they're not going to get to Hightown so easily. However, it's really cool to see Sharon Carter now a part of the gang. This is exciting. Oh, don't bring up new cap. <laughs> I like how Sharon Carter said lay low and there's like this big party going on. So <laughs> go figure. <laughs> Did he just dance? Daniel Brühl just danced? I love it. This is the most elaborate shipping container I might have ever seen. Oh boy. Sharon Carter's gonna kick some butt, huh? <laughs> yes. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Oh my <laughs> Goodness gracious. She destroyed them. Oh my gosh. She's awesome. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is very well shot, by the way. But this is amazing. Oh. Okay. So he disappeared with a snap. Okay. Oh my gosh, she is so awesome, dude. <laughs> Guys, we're seriously out of time here. Oh, Zemo shot him? Oh my gosh. Well, I'm guessing it's because Zemo's continuing his work of eliminating those a part of the Hydra Super Soldier program. Hmm? Bro, Zemo really did that. <laughs> oh boy, uh, they should get out of there. Uh, f fire and that's not good. Took a chemistry class once and uh, twice actually, and I know that fire with those liquids. Oh god, run, run! Oh, Zemo putting the mask on. Oh my gosh. Oh lord. Yeah, maybe bring Zemo on. A good idea at first. Scary idea now. Oh my. Wait, no, Sharon, you gotta come too. Ah oh, man, I want to see more Sharon Carter though. Haha, <laughs> a good little callback. <laughs> That's funny. Wait, who's this? And Sharon Carter, she might be a bigger shot, or like, she's a big shot, but she might be a bigger deal than we think. 
Wait, they're going to give the super soldier serum to the kids? That's not a good idea, right? No, that's not a good idea. <laughs> they're just going to let him go off on his own? Really? What are those, like, tracers? You know? What? Who is this, or what is this? Huh? Who? Oh! What? Are y'all kidding? <laughs> wow. Alrighty, so we got Wakanda in the mix now, too. Oh my, that is something I didn't expect. Wow. Alrighty, y'all, well, let's talk about it. Alrighty, you guys, well, there you have it. That's my real reaction to episode three of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I am surprised. Wow, that ending genuinely took me by surprise. I haven't felt this way since the show began, but whoa, I cannot believe Wakanda is in the mix now, and that's because they freed up Zemo. Listen, Zemo being sprung from jail is creating a ripple effect that the rest of the world is clearly hearing about. I'm sure Bucky and Sam understood the implications of a guy like Zemo being freed, and honestly, now it's gonna be really cool to see how Bucky is going to try and persuade Wakanda to not send soldiers out to go and try and, well, capture Zemo. I don't know, this is gonna be so interesting, but this episode did have a decent amount to unpack, starting with the fact that now we know there are 20 vials of the super soldier serum that the Flag Smashers are planning to, I guess, give to the kids or something like that? I don't know if they're giving them to the kids, maybe they were just talking about the supplies, but Carly's language there led me to believe that maybe they're trying to preserve, uh, I don't know, this line of super soldiers? It's gonna be really cool, again, to see how they handle that. My biggest complaint honestly in this entire series so far has been the Flax Masters being a bit more generic than I would have hoped, but at least I think Harley being the face of this storyline is giving me a lot more optimism because I think she's great. Erin Kellyman has been crushing it in this role so far, and I really love the fact that she seems to be the leader even though we know she's not the leader of the Flag Smashers. Even though it took a little while to get going, I found the chemistry between Anthony Mackie, Sebastian Stan, and Daniel Brule to be really, really good. The jokes on the plane, I think they were a little misplaced, but they kind of worked their way into the script a little bit better as time went on, and I do love that we finally got our girl, Sharon Carter. Emily Van Camp is the only one I could see playing this role and she was kicking so much butt during that scene where they went to go visit Dr. Nagel. That hand-to-hand -hand sequence was one of the most well-directed fights of the entire show so far. I was so impressed. You can feel every single blow and I think that might be the bread and butter of this show. The more grounded hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes, that could be what separates it from the other Marvel properties because we've seen big action sequences before but it's that the raw bare bones fighting that really is drawing me into this show. I'm really glad that the main story though is going in the direction of this super soldier serum and trying to find it, eradicate it, and keep it from falling into the wrong hands. Listen, the snap was bad but then the blip returning people five years after the fact is just creating such chaos for the world and honestly it's going to be so fun to see how this plays out for the rest of the series. And it was also really dope that we got time in Mad Report which does have some implications with the comics. I believe it has something to do with the X-Men and Wolverine himself. Madripoor looked beautiful. Even though it's grimy, it has this underworld kind of feel to it. I thought the lights and everything looked great, the way it was shot. All those scenes really got me so much more intrigued in this series and I mean everything they're building here seems to be coming to a head very soon especially with that cliffhanger ending. But I want to know guys did this episode do it for you or do you feel there's room for improvement? Let me know down below in the comments and I need to know which moment was your favorite of the episode. For me it was just Emily Van Camp kicking butt. I mean Sharon Carter come through. And guys, if you don't want to miss out on my reaction next week, go ahead and hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel, and tap on the bell so you don't miss out. Smash that like button and get loud again in the comments and let me know what you thought of the episode. Again, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you at the next screening.